Did you know that in the last decade, along with writing this podcast you are listening to, Jeffrey and I have released six novels, four script collections, and a memoir. It's true, and they're all available wherever you buy your books. First off, we have four Night Vale script collections. Each one has a full year of this show with original illustrations by resident Night Vale artist Jessica Hayworth and behind-the-scenes commentary on every single episode. Then, we have three Night Vale novels. Welcome to Night Vale, It Devours, and The Faceless Old Woman Who Secretly Lives in Your Home. Each of these is a completely original, full-length story that has never appeared on the podcast in any form. These books expand the Night Vale world in all sorts of unexpected ways. Some of the best Night Vale writing we've ever done are in these novels. And then we have the three non-Night Vale novels. We have Alice Isn't Dead, a new standalone retelling of the Alice Isn't Dead podcast. There is The Halloween Moon, my middle grade novel about a girl who loves Halloween more than anything until one year Halloween just won't end. And You Feel It Just Below the Ribs, a new story in the same world as the Within the Wires podcast. Finally, I wrote a memoir with my wife Meg, touring MC of Night Vale and the voice of the Night Vale credits, In it, we trace the first 10 years of our relationship from each of our points of view without consulting the other one. It's a book about love and memory and how every marriage is two people who may or may not see their lives completely differently. It's called The First 10 Years. A lot to remember, but go to welcometonightville.com and click on books for the rundown, or just go to your local bookstore and look for Jeffrey Craner and or Joseph Fink. We'll be there waiting for you. And hey, thanks. As above, so below. Also, so five years ago, Above is very dated these days. Welcome to Night Vale. You might have heard about this new internet craze the youth have with what they call liminal spaces, by which, as far as I can understand, they mean a photo of any empty public space, especially when the photo was taken at night. An empty McDonald's, an empty swimming pool, an empty blockbuster video, just these normal places we go to every day. But if you take a photo at night when no one's there, then it gives what the youth call liminal vibes, and they cannot get enough of it. Why, my niece Janice watches four-hour-long liminal spaces compilations. She says it helps her relax after stressful days of managing both work and school. She can just zone out and be like, oh man, it's totally creepy when a Forever 21 has no one in it. Anyway, I like to stay in touch with what the new generations are up to. I'm hip, as none of the kids say anymore. So I agreed to watch one of these liminal space compilations with Janice. Four hours of empty movie theater lobbies or whatever doesn't sound like the most thrilling use of my time, but doing anything with Janice is worthwhile, and I'm looking forward to it. I'll bring a bag of popcorn. Wait, do the kids still eat popcorn? Oh God, am I old because I eat popcorn? I'm not old, I'm still young and with it. I just like popcorn, okay? But first, a word from our sponsors. Today's show is brought to you by Night Jeans, the new jeans for night. We all love jeans. Day denim, sure, can't get enough of it. But don't you wish you could wear that reinforced cotton in your dreams? Well, now you can. Introducing Night Jeans. Simply slip off your daytime jeans and pull on night jeans before bed. Settle comfortably under the covers and really get the feel for the night jeans experience. Do you want to put your hands in your pockets while you sleep? Go for it. Do you want to rip the knees off your night jeans? That's cool with us. Night jeans are about you, your needs, and we want you to have fun with it. And for those of us who want the full immersive experience, now introducing the Canadian Tuxedo. That's right, a full pajama set that is blue denim from top to bottom. 
Why dip your toe in dark waters when you could cannonball instead? Think of the luxurious experience when your denim-clad body first hits those sheets, when you close your eyes and drift into dreams clad fully in jeans from head to toe. Night jeans. Jeans may be for the day, but night jeans are for any time at all. This has been a word from our sponsors. Okay, Janice is putting on the Liminal Spaces compilation. It's really slow moving, just pictures of empty rooms while someone is either doing atmospheric music or has fallen asleep on the keyboard that sound was set to John Carpenter, so I think I should be able to keep doing the show while we watch. Oh, we're starting out strong with an abandoned amusement park. This picture is taken at night. There is a light on in one of the rides, a children's ride where the cars are shaped like teddy bears. In the dimly lit interior of the ride, we can see a ladder and a painted prop of a tree that has fallen over with neglect. Creepy. Next, we have a photo of a high school hallway. It is after hours, but the lights are all on. Some of the lockers have been left open and empty. It appears equally possible that a crowd of teenagers is about to come herding through here, shouting and laughing, or that no human foot has touched this floor for a thousand years. It is very, as the kids say, liminal. Although I, I admit, I don't really know what they mean when they say that. I think they just mean spooky, which hey, these are some spooky photos, cannot disagree. Okay, another one of the greatest hits, an empty water park, ugh, super creepy, and you know, liminal. Hold on, there's, <laughs> there's a man in this photo sitting with his feet dangling into an empty swimming pool and I can't quite, huh. Well, he has his back turned, but I know this man. I know him. If only I could see his face, I would know for sure, but I don't like this man in the photo. He, he makes me aware that I have forgotten something. There's an emptiness in my brain where there should be a memory, and I have a feeling that the emptiness is shaped exactly like the man in the photo. Oh, thank God, the photo changed to an empty mall. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Uh-huh. We'll keep watching this. But in the meantime, let's move on with the show. The Sheriff's Secret Police has officially named Dana Cardinal a person of interest in the murder of Dana Cardinal. She is admitted to the murder, describing a situation in which she met herself and, after a lengthy struggle, murdered this other her with a stapler. However, the police cannot proceed with an arrest as of yet because no body has been found and also because Dana Cardinal is alive and walking around. So the paperwork on that would be a real doozy, a secret police spokesperson explained. However, Dana has been asked to turn over any and all staplers in her house, to which she said, I don't have a stapler in my house. This is 2023. And also, did you think I kept the stapler? Like, like a trophy or something? I don't still have the murder stapler. They have also asked her to remain in the state, to which she said that she, quote, has never left the state, doesn't even know which state we are in, and wouldn't know how to leave if she wanted to, end quote. It is definitely very tricky to leave Night Vale, but the good news is, why would you even want to? And now, the community calendar. This evening, there is a safe pug surrender at Grove Park. Now, if you own a pug, you can take it to Grove Park tonight to be disposed of. No questions asked. Pug owners are 90% more likely to experience a pug incident than those who do not own pugs. So while you may think you need a pug for your safety, just know that pug will most likely be used on you or your loved ones. Please do yourself and your community a favor and trash that pug. Thursday, Michelle Wynn of Dark Hour Records will be leading a sound bath and meditation experience. The sound you will be bathing in is... Michelle describing the entire plot of Riverdale from episode one. The meditation will also be that as well. 
Michelle just really needs you to hear how wild the plot of this show gets. There is no cost, but Michelle requests donations of fingernail clippings because she says she would like to put a hex on all of you. Oh, not a bad hex, you know. Uh, Just don't worry about it. Just give me the clippings and we'll see what happens, Michelle said. This weekend is the Night Vale Food and Wine Festival at the Harbor and Waterfront Recreation Area. World-famous chef Emeril Lagasse will be teaching how to boil water, which is the basis of all cooking. If you don't have this, Emeril said, standing next to several different pots of water that were all being heated in different ways, then you don't have anything at all, baby. And then shouted his signature catchphrase, bada bing, bada boom. Renowned chef Nancy Silverton will be delivering the keynote speech titled, I don't know who any of you are or where this place is, and I am pleading for you to tell me that this is only a dream. And our beloved local chef, Earl Harlan, will be cutting off one of his own pinkies in the Flaky O's demonstration kitchen. Mmm, sounds delicious. And finally, Tuesday is Nona's Spaghetti Night at the Taco Bell. Well, the Liminal Spaces video is still going. Janice has fallen asleep. But I'm still up and watching it as I broadcast. Now it's doing nostalgic shots of doctor's office waiting rooms and computer labs from the late 90s. Really aiming hard for childhood memories of a certain age of person. Maybe that's what this is all about. Trying to recreate a version of the world where we were small and lost and the outside world was confusing and grown up. We want to become babies again because if we are not babies, then we are responsible for what is happening around us. Oh. Ooh. Now it's showing weird photos from house listings. Ugh. Basements that are bare concrete with a single black leather couch pushed up against one wall. Dark, dirty hallways with crude cartoon murals on the walls. Staircases covered in plush carpet in a color I can only describe as malaise. Okay, now we are in a computer room in a house. A bubblegum pink Apple computer from when they were trying their best to make their computers look like candy. Oh! There's that man again. And he's sitting in a brown leather computer chair. Okay, he is on an AOL search. No, this is not a photo, but this this is an actual video. I mean, the way it is shot would make it look like a live feed if the tech and vibe weren't so specifically dated to decades ago. The camera's moving closer. And we can see what the man is doing. He's... He's typing something in the AOL search bar. And it looks like he's typing Cecil. I know you can see this. We can't talk now, but we will soon. We will talk so soon. Now he is swiveling in his chair, and in a moment I will see his face, but I don't want to see his face. And the video just cut to a school cafeteria at night, with a single fluorescent bulb flickering over the tables. Oh, whew. I don't know what that was, but I am glad it's over. Okay, maybe now that Janice is asleep, I'll stop this video. I think I've seen enough. Huh. No matter what I click, it's not stopping. Uh, it must be something I'm doing wrong. I'm, you know, I'm so bad at this tech stuff. And now for a children's fun fact science corner. You know, despite the name, I've never given any real fun facts. So let's do that today. Fun fact. No one knows what wind is or what it wants. Fun fact. Once and only once in your lifetime, you will have a thought that no other human being in the history of our species has ever had. You will never know which thought that is. Everything else you think will have been shared with at least one other person, so take that as solace whenever you're lonely. Fun fact, 
A tundra is just a cold desert. A mountain is just a big hill. And a capybara, and I'm sorry, but I have eyes, is clearly just a type of dog. Fun fact, all matter tends toward entropy. The atoms of you are barely held together and someday they must dissipate. Dissipation is the great fact of not just life, but of the entire universe. All that is solid will someday become vapor and then mist and then haze. So don't feel bad that you haven't done those dishes yet. On a long enough time scale, those dishes don't even exist. Fun fact, did you know Reno is farther west than Los Angeles? I didn't. I didn't know where either of those places are. This has been the Children's Fun Fact Science Corner. I've been texting with Carlos to see if he knows how to stop a YouTube video. And everything he has told me hasn't worked. <laughs> Boy, I'm a real bumble hands when it comes to tech. Because even if I exit out of the browser window, it just pops right back up. Playing the Liminal Spaces compilation. In fact, every time I do that, the music on the video gets slightly louder. Why would it work for me, right? Okay, Carlos is suggesting I unplug the computer. Oh, duh, I have tried that right away. I'll just, ah! Okay, listeners, I unplugged the computer and suddenly I am no longer in the studio. Janice is not here. Her computer's not here. I, 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 don't, I don't even have my mic, so who knows if you can hear me still. I'm standing in an old shopping mall. Everything looks decorated like it was in 2003. Uh, there's an advertisement on the wall for the movie How to Lose a Guy in 13 Days, although the top of it has been peeled off so the two actors in the photo are missing their heads. There doesn't seem to be anyone else here. Hello? Hello? <gasps> a voice just shouted back from what sounded like a long, long way away. The voice said, you shouldn't have stopped the video, Cecil. You shouldn't have done that. Listeners, I don't love what's happening here. And while I try to find my way out of this weird mall, uh, let's take you to the weather.
walked through the mall searching for any way out. Any way back to my studio. All of the stores had names I didn't recognize. Slant. Ned's Gifts and More. Thomas Allen Bradley Sports. And the flagship department store, which didn't have a name, only a large red square logo over its door. But finally, I saw a green exit sign and I stepped through, only to find myself in an office hallway. The carpets were beige, as were the walls. I could smell, faintly, fresh photocopies, and I could hear, as though from on the other side of a great crevasse, the sound of a vacuum running. I wandered for a bit, until I stepped through a door that led to a doctor's waiting room from the 90s, full of issues of highlights And that one toy where you move the little blocks around on a track? Another door. Farther. And I was in an empty subway sandwich shop at night. Then another door. Led to a hotel elevator. Which took me up 30 floors. And deposited me in a house that had a carpet the color of malaise. I recognized this house although I don't know why. I walked through the house, following an instinct I could not name, and there was the computer room with the bubblegum pink apple computer and the brown leather chair. In the chair was the man. He was facing away from me. Where am I? And how do I get home? I said. This is your home, he said. This is not my home, I said, but even as I did, I felt that I was lying. This was not my home now, but it was my home once. When was it my home? I didn't remember. What do you want from me? I demanded. The man turned his chair around. His face was perfectly normal and terrifyingly familiar. I had seen it once, in an old VHS copy of Cat Baloo, and then again in the murals that were painted around town. I want you to remember, he said. I don't want to remember, I said. You will, though, he said. You have no choice. And then... Quite loudly, through the room, I heard the old modem dial-up sound, which was totally nostalgic, and I was back in my studio, sitting next to Janice with the plug of her computer in my hand. Huh. Well, I, I, I don't know what all that means. And I refuse to look into it further. So, stay tuned next for a liminal moment since every moment is only a transit into the next. And good night, Night Vale. Good night. Welcome to Night Vale is a production of Night Vale Presents. It is written by Joseph Fink and Jeffrey Craner and produced by Disparition. The voice of Night Vale is Cecil Baldwin. Original music by Disparition. All of it can be found at disparition.bandcamp.com. This episode's weather was Through the Clouds by Checkpoints. Find out more at checkpointstheband.bandcamp.com. Comments, questions, email us at info at welcometonightvale.com or follow us on Twitter at Night vale Radio and Instagram at Night vale Official. We now have a TikTok at Night vale Official as well if you like short videos by a fictional radio station. And also check out welcometonightvale.com for where we have a twice monthly mailing list and info about our merch shop full of carefully selected stuff made by a handful of artists we trust. That sure was an Academy Awards, huh? Some movies won, but also some movies lost, and not everyone agrees. Wild. 